nobody here is using it. I mean, I'm using it. I don't know, Mart, if you're using it, not yet. <laughs> the only way to use it now is either to build it yourself or to use the Fedora 18, which is uh, alpha now, but, well, it's really not ready to be used. So that's the first problem. The, there's a huge delay between when uh, there's a GNOME release and when people can start using it. Then there's the fact that GNOME developers, they will develop GNOME on a specific version, a specific stack with several components that they have on their laptop. But then in the distribution that distributes GNOME, it might be different versions, it might be different components. For example, the GNOME developers will do something that works with system D, and if you use it on Ubuntu, you will have it on, uh, with upstart instead of system D. So that creates a, a combinatory explosion in what needs to be tested, and it becomes incredibly complicated. It introduces bugs that nobody can reproduce because you're using it on some specific version of some specific library. The, um, Why are these things happen? Why this is happening? Because we have a huge fragmentation in the Linux world with distributions doing their own things everywhere and trying to integrate a bit of everything and be universal but eventually doing whatever and more of a disservice to the user than doing good things. It was the same problem. It's, yeah, it's always been the same problem, really. I mean, it's not new with Gnome 3. It's just that with GNOME 3, the GNOME contributors are starting to acknowledge that problem and to try and come up with solutions. One of the solutions is GNOME OS. It won't be uh, an OS that you can download, install on your laptop and be happy with it and completely replace the, the Linux distribution. What the idea of GNOME OS is that GNOME upstream developers will say, we tested, we made, and we tested GNOME 3.8, 3.12 with this components, systemd, pulseodio, ibus, uh, wayland, etc. With these versions, that's what we developed against, that's what we tested it, that's what we recommend if you want to distribute GNOME. And so this list, written somewhere on paper or on wiki or whatever, this is GNOME OS, this list. So it's more of a, of a concept to actually help the Linux distributions who want to distribute GNOME. Because they will know if they want to provide a good GNOME experience, they will use these components, these libraries, these versions. So it's, I really want to insist it's not about replacing the, GNOME, the Linux distribution, it's about helping them by creating a co consistent whole of what GNOME should be. If you want to distribute GNOME, this is what we know will work and what we know, we know will provide a great experience with all the features we've developed. It will be stable. Yeah. <laughs> For whatever definition of stable you have. <laughs> so it seems to me uh, like a GNOME OS like uh, more like a, a standard. Like Java. Exactly. If you can comp uh, pass the compatible tests so you can claim like it is Java compatible. So in this case, okay, if I can pass all the standards or all the interfaces you provide to the Linux distribution, mm -hmm. so this distribution can claim, okay, I'm GNOME OS. Exactly, except, well, I'm, I don't think anybody wants to make a, a system of certification and no, you can't call it GNOME if you're using not that thing. I don't think anybody wants that. But the idea is something like that, yes. So you see, it means uh, 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 on on top of the uh, generic GROM uh, 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 step. Now for the GROM OS, there will be a middleware step sit between no. the GROM and the underlying no. uh, Linux distribution. No, 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 no. Really, it, the idea of GNOME OS is to say that the Linux kernel is part of what GNOME is. System D is part of what GNOME is. If you want the best experience with GNOME, use Linux, not OpenSolaris, not uh, BSD. Use systemd, not upstart or sysd init, etc. I mean, it's free software, so if you want to port it to those other components, you're welcome to do it. 
If you want to use it with those other components, you're welcome to do it. But GNOME as a project wants to focus on a certain stack and say, this is the whole GNOME stack. This is what we know works well, this is what we've tested it, and if you want all the features, that's what you should be using. If you want to do something else, go ahead. We can still call it GNOME and say, well, we do GNOME, but we do GNOME on Ubuntu with Upstart. That's fine. The idea is to, to really to drop the confusion of what is GNOME and this idea that GNOME is just a, a collection of parts. And when you put all those parts together, you have uh, some applications, you have a desktop, and you can do whatever and combine it. You can, it's free software, but GNOME is much more than that. GNOME wants to really be, to own the stack and to be the whole thing. So this is a little different from the original uh, Unix philosophy? Not at all. Not you, at still, all. you still have small components that do simple things. <laughs> it's just that when you take them all together, you call it GNOME. But, I mean, you can't say GNOME is a small component that does one thing and does it well. <laughs> that makes no sense. I mean, GNOME is several applications, it's a desktop environment, it's libraries, it's many, many, many things. Each of those ones, yes, they might or might not respect the Unix philosophy. I don't know, that depends on each developer if they want to respect it. Usually it does. I mean, it's the, the idea of being modular and having small things talking to each other is usually not a bad idea. But yes, GNOME is an integrated whole. And GNOME OS is the, uh, an attempt to integrate more than just what originally, what traditionally was GNOME, also integrate the lower part of the stack all the way through the kernel and say, this is what we work with, this is what we know, we've tested, that's what we want GNOME to be. I mean, for uh, an example would be that uh, GNOME Shell is the default environment for using GNOME. And uh, it doesn't work on BSD. Because, well, at least not on every graphic card, because BSD has, uh, doesn't have a 3D acceleration for many, 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 many graphic cards. And that's something that is needed for GNOME. 